Um, before I ask the Secretary General to come uh, um, to, to the lectern, three quick re brief remarks. First of all, um, afterwards, we all invited for drinks, uh, just to reflect on uh, today's discuss discussions. And I'd really like to thank uh, the panelists, not only of this session, but during the whole day, the moderators, and actually all of you for a really active uh, participation. You've been a great audience. Thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, things like this, days like things just don't happen spontaneously. There's some work that's done behind the scenes. So let's, let's thank those of the Friedrich Eber Stiftung and my colleagues in the Secretariat with a round of applause for making this possible. And now, Secretary General, please, would you take the floor for your concluding remarks afterwards, Mrs. Lehnertse. Ambassador Lehnertse. Thank you. It's been a long day, but a fascinating discussion. So I would like to put forward a few, few points. I'm, I'm not trying to sum up uh, the discussions at this point, but uh, but a few, a few considerations on our, uh, on our debate. Um, uh, I, I would say that we are facing a very complicated uh, um, environment uh, in front of us, and uh, we saw it from the beginning of the day. Um, in, in this uh, uh, environment where we have divisions and mistrust, and, uh, and, and I remember there was uh, also the, uh, a question at the, at the end of this, uh, was it, did it all start with Ukraine or was there a problem before? I remember one of the very first security days uh, that we, we held in, uh, uh, I think, 2012, if I'm wrong, if I'm right, uh, was about, uh, um, was about trust and reconciliation in the OSC area. And the conclusion was one of concern because we came to the conclusion that we have failed recreating a climate of trust and reconciliation after the end of the Cold War. There was still uh, homework, there was frozen conflicts and all that. And, uh, uh, and the year after that, 2013, we started under Ukrainian chairmanship actually, we started uh, uh, seeing the largest, at the beginning of the largest of the of the crisis we faced in this uh, in this year. But so I I would say that uh, this was unfortunately not surprising, but it was in line with the kind of uh, dynamics that we saw unfolding, uh, you know, over over the uh, um, uh, over the years uh, after the end of the of the Cold War. Uh, having said that, the OSCE. Uh, comes out of this debate as uh, a recognized platform for uh, dialogue and, and communication channels. So certainly that element, uh, uh, that element is there. How we can use it, however, uh, is, uh, uh, remains the problem. The, the, how realistic is it to have dialogue and to move forward with a uh, cooperative approach in the face of uh, uh, this kind of environment, the lack of trust, uh, um, uh, uh, the developments we have seen, Crimea, the uh, conflict in, uh, in Donbass, uh, and, uh, uh, and the difficulty also of engaging in, in, the, in the organization. One of, one of the issues that came up is the role of civil society. So let's look at different ways, and it's the intergovernmental method must not be the only one. But even there, we need engagement. And uh, I couldn't help thinking, at the beginning of the crisis in Ukraine, uh, as we saw and we followed, as I say, coming from a Ukrainian chairmanship and having, uh, you know, I went to Crimea myself a couple of times during the Ukrainian uh, chairmanship. Uh, once, uh, one of the visits was there to discuss the European perspective for, uh, uh, for Ukraine. And it was quite a, quite a lively and, uh, but in many ways, controversial discussion in September uh, 2013. Um, uh, but one of the things we saw uh, in the final phases of Maidan, uh, as we also perceived that the party of regions that was also uh, regionally connotated in, uh, in the country was, was melting, that there was a problem of uh, lack of internal dialogue that could have created instability in Ukraine. And we pushed the Ukrainians very strongly. We set up a project with a, with a project, proper project manager. Uh, to assist the Ukrainians having a series of roundtables in the country 
to try to work with the civil society to reconnect and to try to overcome the risk of internal divisions that could have led to conflict. And however, and, uh, we failed, but we, in part we failed because there was not enough buy-in by the Ukrainian side on this. So we need also uh, governments to support this. Uh, having simply civil society work uh, on, uh, on the side, if, if governments don't buy into that, may become a futile exercise. So I think it's important that we also have this, uh, uh, this, this recognition. Now, going through and a few, a few uh, sparse considerations from, from our discussion, um, arms control and the, and the confidence building measures. Uh, also the discussions, and again, some of the points in the last panel show that we are moving in a direction where um, uh, uh, the relationships are complicated. There is, uh, uh, there is a risk also in terms of, uh, of the military relationships and the uh, uh, possibility that we may face a crisis. And some of the tools that we developed over time are not functioning properly. And the dialogue that we are having to adjust them, to try to, to modernize them, or to address uh, some, some of the new issues that we have, close military encounters or more transparency in military exercises, it's not really moving. So that's a very worrying uh, element in itself. We need somehow to find a space to upgrade what we have and to make it relevant for this much more complex environment we're facing today. And we are not, we are not really managing to make uh, enough, enough progress. Uh, so we can try to work to further develop the refine analytical capabilities. One of the ways is to engage more with the uh, uh, um, uh, with academic institutions to try to get support, also technical advice, etc. But at the end of the day, the overall environment and the lack of trust uh, that I referred to the, in the beginning is in itself proving uh, to be an obstacle in, in making progress towards that. So I think we need, we need to address this squarely. And, uh, and because otherwise, uh, as I say, we are going to uh, uh, be deprived of one of the safety nets in the face of a, uh, of a, of a more uh, risky, uh, risky situation. Um, the, the debate on the economic uh, integration connectivity was, uh, uh, was interesting, I found. Uh, the OSC second dimension can be a, a, a useful tool uh, for enhancing connectivity, including between uh, the EU and the Eurasian Economic Union. Uh, whether the OSC could be a, a, pl a platform to facilitate the dialogue, I think I'm rather skeptical. But, but certainly the issue that came up uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, focusing on uh, uh, the problems that this could create for third countries is, is certainly a useful one that could be discussed in the, in the OSC and maybe some, you know, the beginning of an engagement or exploring a little bit the, 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 the conditions for, for uh, uh, a, a, a more strategic uh, um, engagement and the possible agenda for this. Uh, uh, perhaps that's, that, that's a role that can be um, can be considered also uh, in the OSC. A number of uh, interesting proposals uh, uh, came up. A Vienna document for CBMs on economic connectivity, an OSC special envoy on connectivity, uh, an expert group uh, advising participating states, even a second dimension hub. Uh, certainly investing more in the economic environmental dimension of the organization is something that could help in this uh, uh, in this phase, so, uh, so why not? It's one of the recommendations you could uh, take note of and bring back. And uh, also the, the bigger picture, the China-led One Belt, One Road project, which would, stress, which would stretch uh, uh, across most of the OSC region, uh, uh, could be an interesting uh, element. Our uh, Asian partners or cooperation could play a role in that context. Our Central Asian countries would uh, uh, benefit from it, so it's, it's issues. And, and as next year, uh, Kazakhstan will be uh, hosting also a big expo where there will be um, uh, uh, initiatives and, uh, and ideas coming also from, from the OSC. This kind of, this kind of suggestions could play uh, a, a useful role. Um, and we heard also Belarus uh, mentioning the chairmanship of the Central European uh, Initiative and uh, a topic of connectivity being, uh, being also uh, featuring there. Um, transnational threats and, and challenges uh, uh, was in, in itself another complex set of issues. 
uh, uh, geopolitics and the, and the uh, problems that we see uh, in terms of relations within uh, the, the, the OSCE uh, um, group of countries is obviously complicating uh, the setting up of the necessary strategies and the coalitions to uh, uh, deal with these issues. Certainly, as we talk about coalitions, it's coalitions of countries, but it's coalitions of all relevant actors. So I think uh, there really we, uh, we need to go uh, in, a, in a direction of engaging um, uh, all relevant uh, stakeholders and more flexible formats like that of the security days can help us uh, reach out to, uh, uh, um, uh, to other players uh, who could uh, um, contribute to these, uh, uh, to these reflections. We heard a lot about migration and not just from Fabrizio. Uh, as I mentioned, this was uh, the topic of a security day uh, in March, and uh, I agree that this is not so much a crisis of numbers, but a crisis of failed responses and failed regional and international cooperation. And certainly the OSC has a role to play, the OSC is, is playing a role, whether we manage to structure it better and to, to be more strategic in, uh, uh, in our way of addressing it is, is the challenge uh, that we have in front of us, but with the help of Ambassador Wild and the chairmanship, I think uh, um, yeah, we, we're really uh, trying to go in that, uh, uh, in that direction. Um, let me, uh, as, as a last point, uh, refer to, uh, to the institutions and actually to the first report of, uh, uh, of the panel that we, um, uh, we heard the reference being made to. Um, uh, because the, um, uh, the challenges that we have in front of us and the complexity of the agenda requires uh, a broad engagement. And the broad engagement uh, uh, through, in a way, strength and a more effective multilateralism. Uh, uh, the, the challenge there, of course, is that if you want to have stronger institutions, uh, then countries have to accept uh, that they have to delegate some of their functions and then they have to uh, 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 themselves uh, trust uh, the institutions that they've set up uh, uh, to, to perform these functions in a way that is uh, uh, balanced at the same time uh, effective. Um, there, is, there is a debate in the OSC also about the consensus, and uh, I, I'm, I'm a, a strong uh, uh, supporter of the notion of consensus because it keeps everybody on board at every time, and uh, we are able to operate uh, in Ukraine today because of the consensus rule. The decision was taken by consensus. Everybody agreed, everybody is involved in the, in, in the operation, and I think that is the, the strength. But if consensus becomes then a way of micromanaging uh, the operation of, of the organization, so where is the line uh, under which perhaps there is no more need for a consensus? And uh, as things are today, we have consensus on, on, on the agenda of every meeting in the OSC. That's why I had to invent the security days to find a way around some of the uh, blockages of that. Uh, so that's, that's where we need also participating states to have the kind of vision uh, to, to uh, accept uh, that some of the issues have to be put on the longer term and uh, have to be pursued through more effective multilateralism. So with this I will conclude. Uh, there have been references to further security days. We're thinking of something in, uh, in autumn, probably in Vienna, involving mayors, mayors of big cities, to, uh, to talk with them and uh, to analyze a little bit the challenges of big cities in, uh, you know, from, from uh, the, the issues of related to sustainable development to those of uh, uh, marginalization in societies, impact of uh, uh, migration, the problem of uh, uh, violent extremism uh, and, and how this is, uh, this is dealt with. So a different angle and to also bring back to the countries themselves and to the governments who sit, uh, whose representatives sit there the experiences of mayor who deal every day with some of these issues. And then, and then of course, in Prague, uh, probably in the spring, uh, we'll do something that will smell a little bit like a follow-up to this. We will have to, uh, to uh, see how, uh, how our debates internally develop, how the situation develops on the ground, and uh, uh, you know, what will be the useful uh, angle uh, for us also to continue, uh, to continue this discussion. 
but uh, um, I think this was a great, uh, uh, great event. Uh, it was uh, very good to be here in Berlin, thanks to the chairmanship, but thanks in particular to uh, the Friedrich Ebert uh, Stiftung and the Konrad Adenauer Stiftung uh, yesterday for your support in every respect, uh, the premises and uh, uh, the logistics. Uh, um, uh, it has been great working with you. Thanks to the moderators, the panelists. Uh, it was a great discussion, it was a tough one. Uh, but it was very interesting to, uh, uh, to watch uh, from the other side. Thank you very much, all of you. <laughs>